Today on Forbes, as Tesla begins Austin robo-taxi tests, Waymo's ride service expands to Atlanta. Waymo, the U.S. leader in autonomous driving, began operating its robo-taxi service in Atlanta on Tuesday, entering its fifth major U.S. city as it begins to significantly scale up its commercial operations. Just as in Austin, where Waymo began operating robo-taxis earlier this year, the company is partnering with Uber for both ride booking and vehicle service, including cleaning and repairs at depots for the fleet. The company said it's starting with, quote, dozens of vehicles in Atlanta, and that the fleet will expand to hundreds over time. Initially, the service will be available in a 65-square-mile zone in the central part of Georgia's capital city, spanning from downtown to the Buckhead and Capitol View neighborhoods. Waymo's latest launch comes as Elon Musk's Tesla began giving paid robo-taxi rides in Austin over the weekend for a small group of pre-selected shareholders and owners. The launch, which earned much publicity and a share price bump, included human safety monitors in the front seat and chase cars keeping close tabs on a dozen or so Model Ys, which were also tracked remotely. That's closer to the early stage testing Waymo and other autonomous tech companies have done for years, but which didn't charge people to ride along. The day after Tesla's launch, Barclays analyst Dan Levy said in a research note, quote, Bulls will point to yesterday's event as the start of a new era for Tesla, one which bulls and believers have been awaiting for a long time. They see the tech working well with a clear path of scaling and point to Tesla now generating revenue on driverless rides as a critical milestone. We believe the much better question ahead is on the path of scaling, which we believe will be long, and we caution against over-optimism. The Dawn Project, a group created by software entrepreneur Dan O'Dowd that's critical of Musk's self-driving claims, tallied errors made by Tesla's Austin robotaxi fleet on June 22nd. In one incident, it said, a vehicle, quote, failed to complete a left turn and panicked, whipping the steering wheel back and forth. It then drove on the wrong side of the road, failed to correct itself despite there being two open lanes for it to move into, and continued to drive down the wrong side of the road. In another video, a Tesla, quote, phantom braked twice for a stationary police car. Others showed riders being left in the middle of the street after asking the cars they were in to pull over and let them out. Waymos already operate with no human technicians on board in Los Angeles, Austin, and the Phoenix and San Francisco metro areas. The company plans to launch in Miami and Washington, D.C. next year and is testing in multiple locations, including San Diego, Nashville, New York City, Las Vegas, and Tokyo. Before launching in Austin, the company said in April that it was booking more than 250,000 paid rides a week. With the additions of Austin and Atlanta, and recent expansions of its service area in Los Angeles and to more San Francisco Bay Area cities, it's likely up to at least 300,000 paid rides a week. Waymo doesn't disclose revenue yet, though Forbes estimates it likely booked $100 million of rides last year. Besides Tesla, its other primary rival is Amazon's Zoox which plans to begin giving paid rides in its custom-designed robo-taxi late this year in Las Vegas. Rather than loading up existing vehicles with sensors and computers like Waymo has, Zoox's plan from the outset has revolved around creating a robo-taxi service with an electric model unlike any on the road, a small, van-like vehicle with no steering wheel, pedals, or mirrors. It has sliding doors reminiscent of transit trains, and it's designed as a bi-directional vehicle, with an identical front and rear. The Zoox Robotaxi has a top speed of 75 miles per hour, though for now it won't typically exceed 45 miles per hour on urban and suburban runs. It's also intended to operate for up to 16 hours per charge per day and remain in service for at least five years and 100,000 miles. For full coverage, check out Alan Onsman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.